Wow, what a collection. 1903 Vauxhall here can do 20 miles an hour flat out and the passenger sits on the front. The Vauxhall VXR 220 here can do 154 miles an hour and get to 60 miles an hour in less than six seconds. Yikes. And there's a Mark IV Astra estate here. Contrast, love it. Here's a hairy chested Australian built Monaro Coupe. But hold on, what's that in the corner? Oh yes, it really is a Vauxhall Nova. Vauxhall's first super mini. And that's what's great about this collection. It's not all about the glamour models. You've got the family favourites such as the Victor, Viscount and Velox here. Cars that people just went to work and to school in. These were cars that didn't cause mass excitement, but it is so nice to see them in such lovely condition today. Take this Victor for example. I once drove it all the way to Devon and back for a classic car show. Wonderful car. Shame they deleted the overdrive option. Here I am, able to choose any of the cars in this collection, including this 377 brake horsepower Lotus Carlton. What a machine. So it might surprise you to learn, but this is my car of choice, the Vauxhall Chevette. Launched in 1975, the Vauxhall Chevette was really just an Opel Cadet with Vauxhall's own nose treatment. Seen here is very similar to the Cavalier. Under the bonnet is a 1256cc Viva engine, which wasn't shared with the Opel. It was a successful model for Vauxhall, but it was never meant to be the most exciting of cars. The first time I drove this Chevette was five years ago. That was back to back with all the Vivas and the later Astra. And this, this is a car that didn't really fit into that. The Astra replaced the Viva, so you know, it was always a slight question, what was the point of the Chevette? But another advantage to having the Cadet underpinnings was that it's got a better suspension setup. I was surprised at how much better this car felt than the HC Viva. Vauxhall have foolishly lent me this car with lots of fuel, so it's only fair enough to take it for a bit of a motorway thrash. Let's see what the girl can do. I might wind that window up get a bit noisy. Before we've got to the end of the slip road, I'm about to slow down because there's a modern car holding us up. Oh, you wouldn't call it a refined cruiser, but we're blatting along at an indicated 70 odd mile an hour quite merrily here. I'm not sure how long I'd like to keep it up though. The real surprise with this car came when I came down to this roundabout. It's quite a greasy day. You can probably see where this is leading when we consider that the Chevette is a rear wheel drive car. With less than 7,000 miles on it and probably some very old tyres. I'm going to hold on to the camera at this point because I chucked it into this bend. The back end went flying around and I had a nice little sideways moment in a museum piece. Sorry Vauxhall. I'm not going to do that today, it does seem a little bit disrespectful to a car that's in wonderful condition. It even somehow sounds willing. You've got the sort of transmission whine that almost harks back to the 1930s but now nicely subdued a very interesting car to drive. If a bit noisy with the window open. Look at that, you can corner nice and flat, it's not rolling around, it doesn't get upset by bumps. I like this car a lot. 
I think the Chevette proves that your favourite car hasn't got a bit of fastest, hasn't got a bit of most competent, but sometimes cars surprise you. I like being surprised. So there you have it, the Vauxhall Chevette. Now I've told you why I like it, will you like it too? See you on the next Talk Monkeys. Ta-da!